we start with a problem. Say you've written this template function foo. Foo is pretty simple. All it does is accept three inputs and then it passes them on to this third party function bar, along with some default fourth and fifth arguments. Now, you want to make sure that if you call foo with three inputs, this is exactly the same as when you call this third party function bar with those same three inputs and then this fourth and fifth arguments. That begs the question how should you take your A, B, and C input parameters such that you don't accidentally make any copies, you don't change their constants, and you don't turn an R value into an L value reference or the other way around. It turns out that this is not so easy. As a matter of fact, before we got R value references in C++11, there was simply no good solution to this problem. My name is Kurein, and this is a bit skew tutorial. Today's topic, perfect forwarding. Let's get started. So, for our first attempt at filling in our question marks, how about we simply take our inputs by reference? Something like this. This works for any L value inputs. However, if we are dealing with a bunch of temporaries, like these strings 1, 2, and 3, then this will break. Because you cannot bind a non const L value reference to an R value reference. So, in this case, the non const L value references are the big A, B, and C. Our inputs, the strings 1, 2, and 3, are temporaries. They do not have a name, and hence they are the R values. And, as the error explains, we can't bind a non const L value reference to an R value. If you haven't learned about L values and R values before watching this video, then it might get a bit hard to follow. So, if this is the case, I recommend pausing this video and first watching my other video on move semantics. In that video, I explain all you need to know about L values and R values, and that makes it a lot easier to follow the rest of this video. The link should appear on the screen and can also be found in the description. Okay, so an L value reference clearly doesn't work. But what if we make it a const L value reference? Now we can bind both L values and R values. Of course, this gives us another problem. Because if our third party function bar actually accepts its inputs as a non const reference, then in that case we'll get another error. Error binding reference of type string to a const string discards qualifiers. If you don't have C11, essentially your only option to handle all possible inputs correctly, whether they are const or non const, and whether they are L values or R values, is to simply create an overload of foo for every possible combination of const and non const reference inputs. Something like this. And yes, this does allow you to accept all inputs and pass them on to bar regardless of bar signature, but clearly it is not maintainable and it definitely doesn't scale. For each extra input parameter, you would double the number of needed overloads. Luckily, in C11, a solution was introduced so called forwarding references. Just like R value references, forwarding references use the double ampersand syntax. So what makes this a forwarding reference, while this is an R value reference? The rule is quite simple. If there's type deduction involved, then the double ampersand denotes a forwarding reference. If there's no type deduction involved, you have an R value reference. Now remember that aside from templates, you also have type deduction when using the auto keyword. So you can, for example, create a forwarding reference when you're defining your lambda with auto ampersand ampersand. Forwarding references are special, in the sense that they can bind to both L values and R values. And what's more, as the compiler deduces the type for forwarding reference, it uses the rules of reference collapsing, which allows forwarding references to preserve the value category of whatever you're binding them to. Let me explain how that works with an example. Say we have a string A, we call foo with our A. Since our input is an L value, Compiler, when deducing our template parameter big A, deduces an L value reference to string. To prevent this video from getting too long, I will leave the exact reason for this deduction for a future video. But as a result, the compiler ends up with something like this while doing its type deduction for little a. Now, references to references are illegal. You're not allowed to write anything like this. So to make this valid C++ again, the compiler triggers what's known as reference collapsing. 
The rules for reference collapsing are shown on the bottom right. In this case, the second rule is applicable. When, during substitution, the compiler ends up with an L value reference followed by a double ampersand, then it collapses this to a normal L value reference. And, as a result, the final type that is deduced for our little a is an L value reference to string. If, on the other hand, I call my foo with an R value string, in that case, the type the compiler deduces for our big A is just a normal string. Again, I'll leave the details of type deduction for a future video. But as a result, when putting this together, the type of our little a becomes an R value reference to string. In other words, if we pass an L value to foo, the forwarding reference is deduced to be an L value reference. If we pass an R value reference to foo, the forwarding reference is deduced to be an R value reference. The value category of the input is preserved. Okay, so now that we can accept any input without changing its type or value category, how do you pass them on to our third party bar? For this, we'll use the std forward function. This is a function from the standard library, which we'll call it with our template parameters and our input arguments. To explain exactly how SD forward worked, I would need to again go into the details of template type deduction. So what I'll do instead, I'll show you some C++ style pseudocode that shows you exactly how SD forward behaves. Here we have a fake implementation of SD forward. It doesn't even compile, but it does describe exactly what SD forward does. SD forward simply checks if the input template parameter is of type L value reference. If this is the case, it simply returns our input without even touching it. If this is not the case, then, as we discussed before, this means that the thing we are forwarding was actually an R value. So, what happens is that SD forward will use std move to cast its input to an R value before returning it. So essentially, SD forward is just a conditional cast. And thanks to reference collapsing, it returns either an L value or an R value reference. Let me demonstrate. Say our foo was called with an L value string. Then our SD forward will be called with an L value reference to string as template parameter. And as such, when instantiating the function, the compiler invokes reference collapsing, which gives us this signature. Our input is an L value reference, and our output is an L value reference. The if case is triggered, and hence we simply pass on the input without even touching it. If, on the other hand, we call SD forward with as template parameter a value, which, remember, is what is deduced when calling a forwarding reference with an R value, then we get this signature. We accept our input as an R value, the else case is triggered, and we use SD move to cast param to an R value and return it as an R value reference. And that's all there is to it. By accepting your inputs as forwarding references and then using SD forward by explicitly specifying its template parameter, you can forward L values as L value references and R values as R value references, moving them into bar one by one. In other words, perfectly forwarding your inputs to bar. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. See you next time.